All right, Janessa, thank you. Now, an exclusive five month investigation undercovers one of the deadliest secrets in hospitals nationwide. And it's not botched surgeries or risky procedures. On your side, Chief Investigator Ron Regan joins us with finding thousands of avoidable deaths are happening in hospitals across the country. These are patients who are recovering so well. They're back in their own hospital room, talking with family members. But we found far too many are dying within hours, and hospitals are failing to rescue. I just describe it as half my heart died when she died. Because she was my right arm. Her and I were really close. Amanda was just 18 years old. She had got accepted into the local uh, university, uh, Indiana University. There was a whole that. future ahead for her. Very definitely. But that summer, strep throat sent their daughter to the hospital. The nevers are what's hard. He'll never walk down the aisle. I'll never get to pick out a dress. I'll never hold her children. Something <laughs> went terribly wrong. We got a phone call that she was dead in bed and they were doing CPR on her. Dead in bed. It's how hospitals describe dying suddenly and unexpectedly. And we found it's one of medicine's best kept secrets. This sort of flies under the radar and it, that's well known. Dr. Frank Overdyke is a nationally recognized anesthesiologist. Are hospitals fighting to keep these deaths from going public? Certainly it does not bode well for the reputation from a marketing standpoint in a competitive healthcare environment to have unexplained deaths, which is essentially what these are. Our five-month nationwide investigation found it's not happening during surgery or in recovery rooms, but instead here in hospital rooms and floors where complications and risks are judged the absolute lowest, often within hours of family, flowers, and cards. Could this have been prevented? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, we feel 110% it could have been avoided. Prevented with basic technology similar to this. 25 bucks at drugstores. And alarm sounds when breathing slows and oxygen in the bloodstream reaches critical levels. Technology both doctors and hospitals have known for decades. But instead, we found lives are being left to chance. You were essentially were dying. Yes, I died and I came back. Matt Whitman was back in his hospital room on a general floor where patients routinely go for hours without being checked. A nurse later confided. Something made me stick my head in that room and I heard you take your last breath. And she was crying. Everything was perfect. The surgery went well. Marty Schmidt's wife was back in her hospital room. She told me they found Jean not breathing. So was Bill Neckerman. And they found him um, cyanotic, uh, so that means he was blue, and um, his heart eventually stopped and they did a code blue. Brain damage so severe, his family made the painful decision to remove life support. This didn't have to happen. Oh no, this was absolutely preventable. Preventable because we found Hospitals and doctors already know what's causing so many patients to simply stop breathing. Sometimes refer to that as the tip of the iceberg. Dr. Robert Stolting is one of the nation's most respected medical experts. This, th th this fix is, is available. It's available. Yes. It's out there. Why isn't it being more widely embraced? You're right, the fix is out there. He I chaired the anesthesiology department at a major medical school, served on the FDA's Drug Safety Committee, and is president of the Anesthesia Patient Safety Foundation. And what we know about opioids is that they can depress breathing. Opioids are among the most powerful painkillers used following surgery. In recent years, creating an addiction epidemic in neighborhoods nationwide. But we found there's another opioid crisis inside hospitals. Why? In part, new pain management standards adopted 15 years ago. Providing too much 
pain medication. Well, in retrospect, too much pain medication. Plus, we found hospitals actually profit when patients are kept pain-free. That's because patients grade hospitals on how well their pain is managed. Higher scores mean millions in federal cash, placing patients at risk. The safety issue that we're dealing with is what we call a gap between what we do and what we know. Especially deadly for an estimated 40 million Americans suffering sleep apnea. It's signaled by chronic snoring and made even more life-threatening by opioids. That's because many go undiagnosed. And ultimately it may reach a point where it can cause damage to the brain and to the heart. What we believe happened is that he may have fallen asleep and was unable to wake himself up because he had sleep apnea. And there's one more factor, increasing your risk. She wasn't monitored. You know, because they didn't monitor her or they didn't, I, I don't know, I don't know if they didn't know or they just assumed that to do it, but it just didn't happen. If he had had a pulse oximeter, you know, which is the little clip on your finger, um, it probably would not have happened. But our investigation found hospitals across the country are failing to continually monitor patients. People are denying that it's happening, and yet every hospital I've given a talk in about the risks of opioids, they've come up to me afterwards and said, yes, we had a patient just a month ago who we found dead in bed from respiratory depression. Dr. Michael Ramsey heads up anesthesiology at Baylor Medical Center in Dallas. This is something that's entirely preventable and uh, it's something that we need to stop. But it hasn't. We found as many as 50,000 have died or suffered serious brain injury over the last 10 years equivalent to nearly 300 fully loaded jetliners. The airline industry, if, if you had the equivalent of a, a safety issue where we, where we knew that it was a safety issue, and we even knew perhaps how to reduce the likelihood of it occurring, uh, to me that gap would be closed immediately. A gap hospitals have failed to close for more than a decade. This sort of collateral damage as it were, whatever cost of doing business, whatever you want to call this, is unacceptable in our health care system. Where is the pushback? So the pushback comes uh, from the medical establishment, I'm, I'm in a way embarrassed to say. Four full years ago, the top accrediting agency for hospitals called the Joint Commission found improper monitoring causes more than one in four adverse events, including death, and may actually be higher than reported. Even so, a leading foundation for healthcare technology warns patients remain at risk. I think there's more the Joint Commission could do because the healthcare delivery community listens when the Joint Commission speaks. Meanwhile, the luck that saved Matt Whitman. I truly think it's criminal that this isn't used in every single, every time a person is uh, attached to a pain pump or an opioid, opioid um, that it's not monitored because it's, it's out there. Ran out for Amanda, Bill, and Jean, plus thousands more just like them every year. If you have the capabilities and you have the machinery, you use it. I don't want anybody to lose a loved one to something that's preventable. Here in Ohio, University Hospital's Geneva Medical Center is the only hospital protecting patients and saving lives with continuous monitoring of all surgical patients. You can learn more about policies of both the Cleveland Clinic and Metro Health by checking our website at news5cleveland.com. Plus, much more about these tragic but preventable deaths. I'm Chief Investigator Ron Regan.